Today on the show, we will find out if there is time to throw away a grenade that has landed next to you. Or at worst, to hit it off with a baseball bat. firing ground in Alabino, and today is the day when the 1st Reconnaissance Regiment of the famous Taman Division conducts a drill. And today I am joining these soldiers for the first time in my life, and hopefully this will never come in handy. I will try to throw a real grenade at a real target. Fire! Grenade! Soldier Zaitsev, back to the starting line. Yes, Commander. Good afternoon. Hello. Paul, to be fair, I don't understand why one would throw grenades in a drill. Well, it's a psychological barrier. It's horrifying. A grenade, everyone knows from watching movies that when a grenade explodes, there is all this death. They think of how it can demolish houses. And when a man finds himself one-on-one -on -one with a real grenade for the first time in his life, he has this almighty fear. What if it explodes right now, right in my hand? That is, or it falls straight next to his feet. And once a person has this fear, it can sometimes turn to panic. And they can even drop it somewhere. They are afraid to make a mistake. So this is the challenge, to ensure that people are not afraid, so there's no panic. Yes, to give them confidence in their actions so that they know what to do and when. In fact, true experts are able to count up time. Special forces can even pull the lever while holding it. We need to make sure there is enough confidence and skill. Well, I guess we're going to start with a fake grenade, right? For training. Yes, of course. Should I even hold this in my hand? Yeah, you can. This here is actually a dummy grenade. It's a simulation grenade for drills. Its weight, shape, and fuse are very similar to the actual military ones. Well, almost identical. The only difference is that it won't explode. I'll take a look, all right? Sure. Oh, pretty heavy. Uh, it's not advised not to do this with a real grenade. What could happen? Do not toss it up. It could be dropped by accident. It could cling onto something. Somewhere something could pop up. Well, that is clear. Because the principle, yeah, the principle is that there's a lever that holds the striker with these antennas, right? The striker goes down, breaking down the capsules, and then, you know, and then we will have three seconds, yeah? Uh, well, three to six, yes. The fuse burning process takes around three and six tenths of a second. So, all right, could we try this already? I cannot wait. What should we do? Well, firstly, yeah, I get it. Do not throw. First, you must learn how to hold it when throwing, how to equip and hold the grenade, all right? This is one of the most crucial moments. A soldier gets it out after a command. Holds it like this to press down the lever so that it doesn't, yeah, so that it doesn't go anywhere, not to drop it, not to pull anything. Later he pulls the pin, tosses it, and throws the grenade. And then he squats down a position with a gun like this. Well, let's try to throw one. Let's do it. Enough, enough theory. Let's practice. Well, Alexander, are you ready? Yes, yes, sir. Fire. Grenade. Need to pull the pin first. Let me do this like they do in action movies. Well, you're only going to break your teeth this way. I can't pull it out. No, no, no. It's quite tight, yeah? Well, even if you unclench the antenna, they are still under a metal spring. There are many metal parts. I think I broke a tooth. So you can break your teeth, but it won't really help pulling the pin out. No, but seriously, I did really chip a tooth. Yeah, yeah, pull it out, that's right. Of course I know that it's all a drill and that the grenade won't explode, but even with this, Zilch promised. Right, now it's ready. Right now I can hold it as long as I want, huh? Well, as long as the lever is in its place, which holds down all the antenna. Well, should I throw it now? Yes, yes, you can throw it. Not bad. 
Okay, let's just it's all fear. That's one grenade for you. Not bad at all. Well, basically, they are all dead now. Yes. And what if, well, you stand over here and someone throws a grenade at your feet? Can you grab it and throw it away like in the movies? Grab it and throw it like in a movie? Well, imagine 3.6 tenths of a second well, on average during the fuse burning. It is in the air for a second, and then for two seconds, it is left somewhere. Can you grab it in two seconds and throw it away for a safe distance? Well, I think if you are eager to survive, everything becomes possible. Let's try. You throw a grenade at me, start the stopwatch, and when it is three and six tenths of a second, blow me a whistle. Let's do it, right? So this means that the grenade exploded. Let's see how far I can throw it away from myself. Ready? Ready. I didn't see where I dropped it. Also, when it exploded, in theory, it wasn't here, but somewhere in the air, right? Right. Well, there is a chance I could survive? Yes, but under a condition that firstly, you were prepared. When I threw it, you saw its approximate path in the air, and you were prepared for it. Well, if it would have exploded in the air, it's all the same. It's hard to avoid shrapnel if it explodes nearby. What if instead of grabbing it and throwing it away, we try to beat it off? Beat it off? If it is flying at you and you're hitting it away from you, I won't even attempt this for this experiment. We've invited a professional baseball player and we want to see if he can make it in time to hit the grenade so that it flies away far enough for him to be safe. Nikita Kukushkin is a professional baseball player. So now, we will have an experiment. Whether a baseball player can hit a grenade, thankfully a fake one, at such a distance that he is not struck by shrapnel as if it were real. So everyone, ready? After my command, throw. I set the time, and a whistle will signal a grenade explosion. Get ready. Go. Looks like we have been killed. <laughs> and now, We'll show you how they simulate grenade explosions in the movies. Here's Alexei, our pyrotechnic expert. Alexei, I see that you're here. I guess let him lie there for a bit. Well, it weighs a little more than an average grenade. Yes, we are doing an imitation of an explosion because special pyrotechnic explosions are used in the movies too. You know to make the reality ever so slightly more embellished, so it looks more impressive. Right, so there's the release of the fire, it's all beautiful, sure, yes. And everything shatters. Let's take it step by step. Perhaps better not. Never mind, I have just held a grenade anyway. This is the pyrotechnic charge, right? Yes. Kind of small. How much does that have? 100 grams, probably? Well, a little more. A little more. And here we have a cone, which... This is a mortar, yes, in which we will charge the mixture and the rest of the ingredients. But to have this release of fire, what do we use? What's in these cans? Fuel. Is it just fuel or something else? No, it's a special solution. A special solution? Yeah, specialized this? Special mix? All secret? No actual information? Let's start.
Pavel, we have probably seen exploding grenades multiple times. I would like to hear your expert uh, opinion about cinematic explosions and, and how much they differ from the one we will make right now, right? How will it be different from the explosion which we are going to do with a real grenade right now? Three, two, one, fire! It blew up. How do you like it? Is it similar? It blew off everything it could from the dummy. Firstly, there was no smacking noise, and there is no such tall column of flame when a grenade is blown up. Nothing and no one is pushed back this far. Anyway, you'll see it all yourself now as you blow one up. Well, actually, we arrived at our most important location of the day. This is actually a trench for throwing grenades. Where do I go? Here. Come here, right here. And it's safe, right? To hide here? Yes, yes, there is a heap of dirt and sleepers. This can withstand debris even if it blows up within 5 or 10 meters, but still not advised, of course. Yeah, it's advised to throw it properly. This is a real combat grenade? Oh, actually, yes, a real grenade. Yes, military one. Yeah, I have already prepared and equipped it here. That's a grenade. And the operator should probably run to here as well, right? Well, of course. So, guys, scared yet? I am like a monkey with a grenade right now. No, not scared. Here, with the thumb. No, not like that. Not that way. Hold on, hold the grenade. Pull out. Right, right. And just like that, got it. Yes, yes, pull out. Oh, God. Come on. Jesus. Fire. All right. Looks like we survived. You know, these two or three seconds, I saw my whole life flash in front of my eyes. Can I keep the pin? Yeah. Your first grenade. I hope it's the last one. To be honest, I did not expect that the filmmakers are straight up lying when they show explosions of grenades in the movies. Have you seen the real explosion of a real grenade? And then with these flames and the disheveled dummy. Listen, they are not lying, in fact. They are just trying to create a beautiful picture, embellish the reality. Yes, well, otherwise you wouldn't be excited to watch the movie in the first place. It's like with the special effects, too. It's all somehow complements each other in an elegant way, you know? Movies aside, we have also made a couple of other seriously legit experiments while trying to find the true difference between several types of grenades in an almost academic way. In fact, we will show those only after a not so entirely serious explosion in our category, Mega Explosion. We are back on our secret drill site. This man here is in charge of the special effects. Right now, he is putting up a very important special effect. In general, we want to know whether or not a cast iron bath can protect one from debris of an explosion. Well, in this case, toilet debris. There is a wonderful scene in a movie when two policemen have to hide in the bathtub from the bomb that was left under a toilet. Now, with the help of our friend Vasily, we will find out if this could help. 
How much is here? Well, it's quite a thick cast iron bat for protection from some pottery pieces. Cast iron. Cast iron. Although, to be honest, I'm not sure if they have cast iron bathtubs in America. Most likely they are acrylic. No, why? They could have. You think? Yeah, well, you know, there are very low baths. Ouch. It seems he's already lost one leg. Huh? Listen, we shall fill it in. And... Whoop. Well, look, at least we will have... We will see it. Are the pieces here? So here, we will see that this place is not protected, and this one is, right? Well, from here, we shouldn't be under any effect from the blast. You will make a direct explosion so that it hits exactly? Well, direct or not, in any case, we will have the toilet nearby. The main impact will be here at this wall, right? That is not higher. If we just move it a bit, then we will have a larger area. Well, I think we should stay within the size of a standard bathroom. I think that this distance is more than enough, okay? So what, let's charge it up? Yep. Come on. Are we filling up with water? No, I don't think there was water in the movie. Okay, all right. But there were two of them in the movie. Are you going to be a second? No. As always, a cinematic charge? Well, this is a legit movie charge. Well, as always, it's the only one we've got. Where do you think we should put it? Why not, actually? I think it's even better this way. Let's do it. Just like that? Yeah. yeah, everything is simple here. Yeah, also, I'm not a big fan of these toilets. Why? It is called a reverse irrigation toilet, you know? Close it. By the way, we can bet on it where the lid is going to land. I bet that you will not find it. And if I will, I'll give you this one then. <laughs> if it stays? Okay, let's run. Already? Well, why not? All right, run. Ilya, tell me, please, how far are the debris moving after the explosion, and how dangerous is it? Well, listen, well, it is actually very dangerous. Heavy, huh? Fragments are large. Heavy, hard, sharp, and generally flying quite fast. That means we shouldn't stand in the line of sight. Of course, better sit down somewhere. The further, the better. 100 meters? Well, somewhere like that, yeah. Actually, if everyone is ready... Get ready! Three! Sorry. Three. Two. One, one! Run! Did you know that in the Finnish war, they made glass grenades? Yes, I've heard about it. Which a mine detector couldn't find. Yes, it's not even about the metal detector. It was very bad medicine-wise because it was very difficult to find the pieces. See, we moved it. We did. Look, we broke the bath lake completely. But look what it has hit. Through, you see, none. Yes, I thought that we beat it through. Look, see the enamel is scraped off. Oh, wow, yeah. That is where it hit. So with the amount, the amount of explosives which we had, they could have been scratched by the enamel. Sure, it's uh, his head here after all. Well, like this. Look, look, there is something in his head. Slightly scratched. Look, it cut it off. Kind of. Alexander, I really want to go back to our bet. Yeah, about the lid. Yeah, the lid. Well, you know, even if I won, I wanted to give you this one. This one wouldn't satisfy me. Alex, a small bit scratched your car. A small one. Small one. Great. Well, never mind. Wait a minute. Now I want to see my car. Let's go have a look. Yeah, let's go. We are located at the site of the engineer troops because 
This is where you can see the offensive and defensive hand grenades in real action. Igor Nikolaevich, hello, good afternoon. Igor Nikolaevich, our goal is to see how one grenade differs from another. Could you tell us a bit about the core differences besides what they look like between an offensive and a defensive grenade? So they are distinguished by their hitting properties. The offensive type has a smaller casualty radius. The defensive is respectively larger in radius. The uniform that is on us and the test dummy. Does it protect against hand grenades? Again, all must be considered from according to where the sapper is located. It depends on the distance and where the debris are going to fly off to protected, unprotected. The vitally important parts are more protected and then there are less protected. For example, the sleeves, although they protect us from debris, but they could vary from case to case. Igor Nikolaevich, here is the setting, right? The target is a dummy right now. Let's prove how well it is protected. And personally, I seriously doubt my ability to throw a grenade so that it fell exactly where it should. We will carry out tests in a very controlled form and we will blow this up electrically. That implies you're going to cover it around with some explosives? No, we will not be covering it around. We will pull out the fuses, we'll insert inside an EB and use it to trigger a grenade. And that is, in fact, it is the same. The same thing, right? Yes, the effect is the same. The only difference is that we will be at a safe distance and no one will suffer. Fire! Fire! So, let's see what happened to the suit. Well, this is just some kind of fumes, right? Well, again, you shouldn't say it's just some fumes. This is one of the affecting factors. That is the, if this gets into your eyes, it would, yeah, shockwave, heat, flash, all of this affected the dummy. And that means he has received his portion of destruction. But in any case, the shockwave has worked, but so did the protection. It worked and kept him safe. The shockwave went by. Well, if I take a look now, this is behind the whole target, right? It turns out it was here. It was next to it. Well, here you see the cuts in the legs in this area. Pelvis area. Yes, the pelvis. There are fresh marks. And now let's try to blow up the defensive F1. I understand that there should be more debris, am I right, in the targets? Well, according to its technical characteristics, it has a larger casualty capability. And this increases the chance that all these dummies will be affected. Well, let's see how a suit can hold up to a close explosion. We'll make a test at the same time. Ready? Attention! Fire! Well, we have more holes in the target. Well, we also got perforating hits. From here to there, there, the far one too. And this one, which used to be clean. It's got much dirtier. Well, we got holes. And it's just, this just proves that fragmentation hit, right? Yes, there's fragmentational damage. So, well, now on to the moment of truth. Well, basically, from this distance, debris can be pretty big, right? Well, the pieces may not be necessarily large. However, there could be a stronger shock wave, which means that the protection has fulfilled its function. Oh, yes. Oh, here are some more, but that's just the small things, I guess. Well, that is a land expansion. Ah. Well, in all honesty, 
Okay. Is the sapper still scared in a suit like this? No. Well, at least it is keeping him safe in some sense. In any case, he will feel a bit more confident. But still, they can only be wrong once. Well, of course, being wrong, as they say, it is a matter of chance. Cases differ. Perhaps real combat grenade explosions do not look as spectacular as we see them in the movies. But a grenade is a weapon that has been proving its efficiency for several centuries and is still a reliable tool to terrify the enemies. Thank <laughs> you.